Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa dahu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. That is, with Allah's name, merciful benefactor, merciful redeemer, all the praises due to Almighty God. I give open and sincere testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, the one alone, and none is like unto him. And I give open and sincere testimony that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. <clears throat> and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's choice and blessing upon the Prophet Muhammad, upon his descendants, upon his companions, those who follow the companions, the believers, all of them, Muslims, all of them, all the way back in time and all the way forward in time, for as long as it please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jumar Mubarak to you. Bless Jumar to you. We invite you to a du'a, so if you will adopt a position of reverence. Oh Allah, we beg of thee steadfastness in the obedience of thy command and firmness in pursuing the right course. And we beg of thee gratitude for thy favor and the capacity for worshiping thee in the best way. And we beg of thee a sound heart and truthful tongue. And we beg of thee the good of that which thou knowest. And we seek refuge in thee from the evil of that which thou knowest. And we seek thy forgiveness for those sins of ours which thou knowest. Verily, thou art the great knower of unseen things. Amen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Again, we thank you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity, the spirit, the consciousness, the will to be here on this day, this day of, uh, of Yom Jumah, November the, the 13th. They say Friday the 13th. <coughs> Friday the 13th is a bad day, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Friday is the best day that ever shone on the earth. Yeah. So we accept what Allah has said over those who might have some superstitions about 13. We witness that Almighty God, Allah is one, that he is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything. And it is said in Quran, so he is the first of the creators, and he is the best of the creators. And we witness that Allah is the God of all of humanity, that he is the God of beauty, and he is the God of excellence. That is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from any imperfection. We thank Almighty God, Allah most high, for all of his mercies to us, for the gift of our being, for his creation, his prophets, and his messengers, and for the glorious Quran, the completed guidance. And we said by extension, we thank Allah most high for the lesser lights. We, we thank Allah for prophets and messengers, but when we say lesser lights, we're talking about men and women who've been blessed by Almighty God with divine insight and divine guidance, and they too provided light on the path of life for us that caused the path to be renewed revived and restored so that religion 
for us might be so that we might reach the destiny that our lost found God has created us for. <clears throat> when we think about the path of life, and we think about having that path renewed, revived, and restored, and we reflect back on our life, sometimes when we reflect back on our life, we can say, Alhamdulillah, because we know we sure was on the wrong path. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed us through this way of life to the right path. So we thank Allah for this, this beautiful religion, this way of life that he chose for us so that we could complete our lives as, hum as human beings in community with other human beings. Now anybody who wants to have a completed and perfect life, all they have to do is live the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed in the Quran. They want a completed and perfected life. They want the life completed and perfected. Take the Quran and then live one's life according to this complete revelation. We begin these comments for Salatul Jumal and we want to try and frame them in the respect of in respect of the present time. <clears throat> and we know that the times that we are living in, these are challenging times. Very difficult times. Many are faring well. They're getting along very well. Many faring very well. Then there are others who are on the Verge of going under. There's uncertainty, and they don't know if they're going to be able to survive. Some doing well, but some don't know if they're going to be able to survive. They ask the question what are we to do? I was asking myself this question thinking about the times that we were in, these times of uncertainty, what are we to do? And I, I had my Quran open. And the Quran was open and it had a caption on the page and the caption said, what should the faithful do? I was asking the question, what are we to do? And Quran was, was, was stating the question, what are the faithful to do? Because we're going to have these kind of questions, right? These questions, what are we supposed to do? This was Holy Quran, Surah 9, Ayat 119. Under, what should the faithful do? And it reads, A'udhu Billahi Minna Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullahi that is, translation, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and be with those who are truthful. So, in these times when we are wondering what should the faithful do, what should the faithful be doing, Allah Taala gives us the answer to the question. If you are a believer, ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, the one who believes in Allah. He said, ataqullah, that is, fear Allah. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is not, not talking about fear in the sense of being afraid. It's not the fear of a coward, the fear of someone shaking. That's not the fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making reference to in a talk to love. This fear is, is more accurately defined as, as being regardful. Oh, you who believe, be regardful of Allah. Regard what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. Have sacred respect. Attaqullah helps sacred respect for what Allah has said and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to us and be with the ones 
who are truthful. So in these challenging and difficult, uncertain times, when some appear to be doing well, and some appear just barely surviving, we ought to have regard for, respect for, be heedful of, and mindful of what Almighty God has said and the order that Almighty God has established. And that's, that's one, right? That's the first thing. Have sacred respect and regard for what the lost of the idol has, has <coughs> revealed and the order he has established. Then he says, Wa kunu'a ma'ai and be with the ones who are truthful. Be with the Sadiqin. The ones who sincere. The ones who speak the truth. The ones who keep the faith. The ones who observe their promise. The ones who trustworthy. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, he said the characteristics of the hypocrite are three. He said when he speak, he lies. If he make a promise, he breaks it. If you give him a trust, he betrays it. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be with the ones who are true and sincere, who, who speak the truth. Who 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 are, 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 are obliging their promises that they make. This is what the faithful should do. We shouldn't be on the sidelines, right? We have heard the term say, "Well, we're on the sidelines." But you know, on the sidelines meaning that <clears throat> the person might be saying, "Well, it's not my problem." You know, it don't concern me. We shouldn't be on the on the sideline. We shouldn't be sitting on the fence, right? So what, what's what's the that's colloquial, you know? That's kind of a a, a, a slang for a person saying, mm, I don't know if I'm for it or against it. I don't know if I'm for this or against it. But we shouldn't be on the sidelines or sitting on the fence. We should be striving for what is right. And we should be confident that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed will bring us to the victory. If we just remember uh, a little of the history of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said after 13 years of persecution, and torture, and injury, and boycotting in Mecca. Then the migration to Medina after many battles, many uh, skirmishes, a lot of violent encounters, militarily, and finally con the conquest of Mecca. Mecca now was being governed by Muslims, had Muslim authority. And the hope of the people was that their lives were going to be restored. They said, oh, now our home life is going to be all right. Because they had 13 years of persecution and, fight, and torture and injury and boycotting. So they said, now my home life is going to be back right. Now my family life is going to be back right. Now the social life is going to be right. Now we're going to have some peace and serenity. All of this, the aspirations and hopes of the Muslim. In the midst of this, right? In the midst of these hopes, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he received a notification that the, the Byzantine <coughs> army, that is, that the Romans, that had conquered Persia, which is Syria, they were, they were marshalling an army, a great army, 
And what their intent was is to invade northern Arabia and scout out al-Islam forever. Now the Muslims, they they've been through 13 years of persecution. Conquered, conquered Me Mecca without one drop of blood being shed and hoping and expecting that peace and tranquility was going to come to them. But now there was another challenge, probably greater than any challenge that they had uh, encountered before, that an army was coming with the intent of stamping out Islam. And the Romans were known for great armies. <coughs> So the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he decided, he said, rather than waiting on them to come to us with this huge army, with their armamentarium of weapons and cavalry and entry, infantry, men trained for war, the prophet Muhammad decided, he said, we're going to not wait, but we're going to rally the Muslims and we're going to confront the enemy. The historians say, that in these days that the ranks of the Muslims, they had two kinds of people. Those who entered Islam, and when they entered Islam, they entered with hearts full of conviction. That was one of them, one of the types of people. And the other type were those in search of, mater of material gain. They entered this Islam to see what, what kind of gain I can get from this. Or they were entering out of fear of having to be under the sanctions of the new government. That's almost like it is today, right? Some people enter sincere. Some people enter with hearts on what I may be able to gain or some kind of fear. But nevertheless, the Prophet Muhammad set the site of the battle to be taboo. And the thought was, how will the Muslims respond? How will they respond to this cause? Well, they may be asked to leave their families, leave their properties. It's going to be in the, in the height of the summer heat. They're going to have to cross a watery desert. And then they're going to have to defeat an enemy that had already defeated Persia. It said of those who had a strong conviction and who had love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love for the Prophet Muhammad and loved the religion that they had joined, so they came and they offered everything that they had. The ones who had wealth supplied those who, who didn't have wealth. And it said among those were some who were poor, that they had walked in order to join the Prophet Muhammad. And when they got there, they were turned back because they didn't have the supplies that they needed. They didn't have a camel or they didn't have a horse. And so they cried because they didn't have the means to join. These were the ones who had strong conviction Strong love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Strong love for this way of life. Strong love for the Prophet Muhammad. And then there was the other group to which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in Holy Quran, Surah 9, Ayah 38. And it reads, Ya ayyuhaladzina amanu. Malakum said, Oh, you who believe, what is the matter with you? These were people who had, had, who had come into Al Islam. So the Prophet Muhammad is acting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing, Oh, you people who believe, you say you believe, what's the matter with you? What excuse do you have that when it is said, go forth? In Allah's way, you should incline him, you should incline heavily to the earth. Are you contented with this world of life instead of the hereafter? The provision of this world's life 
is but little as compared to the hereafter. Yet yeah, you have a Dina and a new man I come. What excuse do we have? What excuse have you? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in theory, that is, to go forth. There's just not an any going forth. Go forth to the fight. In theory, Allah, peace of the Allah, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah says this, that people are clinging, that you cling into the earth. That means they're moving slow. Like, oh, this decision I have to make now to do this is very weighty on me. It's very heavy on me. Allah says, are you concerned about what you may gain or uh, what you may gain if you stay? If I don't go, and I, if I don't go to, to the fight and I stay, I might gain this. Or if I go to the fight and lose, I may lose this. These are the things in their minds, thoughts running through their minds. It's going to be a great drought. It's going to be a long journey. The fruits in the field, they ready to be harvested. The extreme heat. Then we got a powerful army. Just like today. Today when we ask to go forth with, uh, in the car of a wasp the island, some might say, well, it's too cold. We got to go that far. I might lose my job. We can't beat the man. One person gave such a flimsy excuse. He said, to the Prophet Muhammad in trying to offer an excuse for not going out in the way of Allah. He said, the Persian women are so beautiful that I can't resist them. So I think it's better that I stay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in, in, surah, in surah 9, ayat 41, <coughs> Again, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and fearu kafafan wa thakalan wa jahidu a bil ambalikum wa anfusikum fi sabilillahi dalikum kaira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, said, go forth whether it's light or heavy. Go forth whether it's light or heavy, whether you got all the means or not. And jahirahu, from the word jihad, that is strive. But jihad is not just any striving. Jihad is, is struggling, exerting oneself strenuously, putting all of your might into it, going to the utmost of your ability in even what you say and what you do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and bil and walikum, with all of your wealth and all of your possessions. Don't be afraid. Don't be cautious. Don't be reluctant. And with your own self and fusikum, with your own self, with the best part of you, with your mind and your spirit and your soul. And that's what the Muslims and the Prophet Muhammad did. That's what the believers did. They crossed the desert. They bore the heat. They fought the thirst and the dust storms, the trials, scarce food, and finally they reached Tabu. They was tired, and hungry, and thirsty, and beaten by the elements. But they had a spirit that was energized and ready for war. Somebody might say, then what happened? Said the Roman army, with its thousands of trained soldiers, heard that the Muslims had reached the taboo. What they did? They retreated. They left. They went back. Without throwing a, a, a single ball, a, a, not, a, not a spear. They retreated. So, what is the message in this for us? 
we're going to be facing some difficult times. We're going to be facing some challenging times. We're going to have some hurt and we're going to have some loss. But we shouldn't make any excuse for not striving and fighting for what's right. Many other things that we put in our mind, all of those calculations about worst case scenario, this gonna happen if I do that. That's gonna happen if I do that. If I do this. A loss of gun that I love is control of the conclusion of all affairs. So we have to be courageous, be sincere, be committed. And then we have to go forth within our own selves, whether we think we're equipped or not. And let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the resolution to us. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we be of those like the, the prophets, the sahaba, and the followers of them in that day in this day. Dua. O oh Allah, guide us, forgive us our faults, and grant us the blessing of faith. Amen. In these second comments, which we, which we intend will be very brief, we want to remind us, as I was reminded, to be more grateful. <clears throat> we have to be grateful. We have to thank Allah Most High for the little things. I was listening to a lecture by one of our imams, and after he concluded, one of the imams who began to, to speak, I didn't know him, but he began to speak, and he was, he, was, he was speaking on being grateful for little things. It's like, like, said, we ought to thank Allah for like eyelashes. See, we, we maybe we say, well, eyelashes don't count. They, you know, they're just a number of eyelash. But, but nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, he created without a purpose. And what, without a useful purpose. So what are eyelashes? Eyelashes, the scientists say, so they're the first form of defense for the eyes. That it catches all airborne kind of Degree. So he said, we, he reminded us, we ought to thank Allah, hey, we got eyelashes. We ought to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we got eye water, like tears. We got moisture in our eyes. We don't think about that consciously. Consciously. But we have to, we should be thankful and grateful to Allah that we got water in our eyes because science and medicine says that dry eyes can lead to vision loss and blindness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us eyelashes and he put, us, put water in our eyes so that we can continue to see. And the opposable thumbs so that we can grasp things and swivel joints so that we can stand and, and turn and keep our balance. All these things here that we don't give conscious thought to, we ought to be more grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be grateful that no more ruthless leaders roam in the earth like Attila the Hun and Genghis Khan and the Queen Mary, they call blood, we call her Bloody Mary because of her characteristics. We could thank Allah that we, don't, we ain't got that kind of, of situation to deal with. Grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have given us rocks 
right, for our sustenance. Maybe we had to chew rocks, huh, for our sustenance. But in Allah's mercy, he gave us, what, grapes, and plums, and peaches, and bananas. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who is not in need of anything from his creation. We conclude with reading from Surah 14, Ayat 7. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he says, if you are grateful, I will give you more. If you are grateful, I will give you more. So we should be thankful, thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of what he has given to us. The sun and moon, the herbs and trees, the fruits and vegetables, the grain, the seed, all of them in Surah Rahman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals then, Fabi which then of the bounties of your Lord will you deny. So let us be mindful to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for not just the big things, but for the small things, for the, for the little things. Dua, O oh Allah, help us in remembering you, being grateful to you and worshiping you in the best manner. Amen. Alhamdulillah. Ikama salah. Haqbir. Allahu Akbar. Haqbir. Allahu Akbar. Haqbir. Allahu Akbar. After the, the prayer, inshallah, we will make Janazah prayer for Michael Tip. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya al-Salat, Hayya al-Salat, Hayya al-Falat, Hayya al-Falat. Bada qamat al-Salat, Bada qamat al-Salat. الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله We make our attention for two rakaa salat al jumaah and in our minds we're going to be shoulder to shoulder and heel to heel from jumaah to Allah may pass Allah Akbar Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik, Yawm, Al-Din. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina al-Sirat al-Mustaqim, al-Sirat al-Ladin, an-amta alayhim. وَإِلُّ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلِلْدَّارِمِينَ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفت ورأيت الناس يبكون في ذل إله أفواجا فَصَبِّرْ بِهَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ وَتَوَابَ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ سَبِّحْ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله